we have uh, the recorder is started. Uh, I'm sharing the agenda already. I'm hoping you can see it. Can I get an acknowledgement? Oh, yes, we can see it. Okay, do you want to walk through it, uh, Loa? You composed it and you made some changes from last time we met. I actually just took what I remember that people asked for last week. Uh, so, and then, uh, yes, now we had curated dropping out. So we have a pretty light again, though. Uh, I think you just can take it in order as it's on the agenda. All right, uh, the first item on this agenda is the review of the action items uh, list that we keep track of. And uh, I'll flip to it. Uh, I'm assuming I usually do this update, so I'll, uh, I'll continue to do it unless uh, Loa and Nick, uh, feel free to let me know if you want to um, uh, take over. Okay, uh, so the open items from last time we met, uh, we have an update on the requirements draft. This is on the agenda today, so I'll skip over it. Uh, the second, um, it's, uh, it's the uh, gathering some inputs from multiple uh, multiple si uh, sides, and so far we've we've got a uh, couple of updates, and we also today have Jimmy Dong. Uh, he asked last time to be uh, updating on this uh, topic, and he's on the agenda. Kiriti uh, was supposed to be updating today, but uh, we will do, we will do that next week. Uh, so, this item is on the agenda for Jimmy to talk about today. Um, so, we will keep this action item open uh, for people if they want to uh, to update like next week or they want to ask a sl uh, slot to talk about this. Uh, this is the right time and I can log their request. Okay, I don't hear anybody asking, uh, so I'll move on to the next action item. Um, this is an action item that we had uh, logged a while back, and uh, and it talks about the de design directive text. Um, given that we have a, a requirements draft that the design team has worked on, and uh, some other drafts as well that are opening up, and the design team will be working on, should we present those drafts as our design directives to, to the working groups and let them give feedback, or do we think we need this action item? Um, I am suggesting that uh, now it's, uh, the, this statement is becoming moot, right? So, uh... I don't think we need it, uh, and if we need it, we can actually revive it. Uh, so, yeah, yes, those. Okay, I'll, I'll happily do that. Interesting. It's not easy for me to find uh, those items. Okay. Right. 
that it is. Okay. Um, let me submit this change and then go back to Please, the sorry. last. You could yeah. say something that this has been overtaken with uh, uh, by other documents progress in uh, the MIAD project. Okay, uh, I will. I'll do that after I go over the uh, the last open item, uh, just so that because I need to edit the page. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, the last action item is to talk about user defined action uh, bits. Uh, the, yeah, the current state is uh, we need text to describe the use case and examples. And uh, this is not on today's agenda. I did not ask for a slot and I don't think Kriti asked. Um, but I think we need to talk about the standardized user action uh, points first. And once we are comfortable with uh, with that, we can start talking about user defined uh, ones. Um, th it's still important, uh, but I you know I don't have uh, anything to update on that today. I agree that it's important, and I think some of it will also depend on the outcome of our meeting, uh, the meetings we're having on the hardware in terms of how we're going to express these. Um, one question I have is how, how long are we meeting in this design team before the IETF? Um, so we are on, the, it's the third today and the, the next meeting would be the 10th and beyond that the 17th. <coughs> um, are we meeting on the 17th? Um, in uh. which case we might bring that up on the 17th, otherwise we can, I don't know um, also how many people will be physically in Vienna and what, you know, what, what the thinking is there. Yeah, usually people want some time, you know, the week before uh, ITF to read through drafts. So, but I'm open to keep the meeting if everybody is, uh, and Loa, what, what's your thoughts on keeping the meeting on the week before ITF? And as well, all attendees, you know, feel free to pitch in. I mean, we. Uh, I think uh, we can take. I think we keep it open for the for the time being. If uh, we have a strong request to not run that meeting, we just close it. You could write three three two two if you want. It would be nice. <laughs> okay, um, I'll be consistent and uh, so put the potential. Uh, so I'll go ahead and make that suggestion that the uh, yeah. Okay, I'll keep it as such. Okay, that was the last action item uh, we have on the list. Is there anything else I should be tracking on this page um, before I submit? Um, one question I have, and I'll bring this up also in the uh, discussion uh, on the framework document. Um, we have a document on the first nibble, uh, especially in terms of how to use it and and the registry for it. 
that document was written a while ago and we haven't discussed it here at all. I think we should. And I think, um, you know, to the extent that, um, you know, we have consensus on it, um, we should probably think about adopting it. It's, yeah, it's orthogonal to much of what we're doing here. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll track slot requests here. Uh, so is your request to present during the design team or during ITF 113? Um, it's not too much present, although, <clears throat> excuse me, I can do that. It's, it's that um, it's an important aspect of what we're doing here. Uh, it's not directly related to how, you know, bits are captured, uh, you know, or bits express actions or, or associated data, but it is important uh, sort of in closing this, especially for the PSD part. So I think we should come back to that topic and you know, uh, think about progressing the document, think about uh, where we want to take it, or you know, if, if we think that's not important, then we should make that decision also. But uh, right now we have just sort of left it um, Hanging, I I would say. Okay. Um, are so, you more, yeah more accurately? Uh, are you asking that we uh, resurrect the discussions on it in the next meeting, for example? Um, sure. Or I mean, since this meeting is light, I can do it this meeting. Uh, from the point of view of um, recapping what's in the document, and you know deciding how we want to move forward. Okay. Okay, and I'll give the AI to you, Katie, then. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll add it towards the end. Usually, Loa leaves a uh, room for any other business on the agenda. Um, so I'll I'll just uh, add. Okay, six six. By the way, you know that um, just putting one, 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 one for all of them works. Um, you don't have to keep them in order, at least for for markdown. Yeah, so, I know it does. Uh, I mean, just so you don't have, I mean, if you move things I, around, I it's much easier. But Okay, thank you for reminding me, but the problem is the tool seems not working broken. So you see here. Oh. <laughs> so, but, but, yeah. yeah. I don't know why it does that, uh, but I, I I I understand what you're saying. Thanks. Uh, okay. Um, I'll skip over the second item uh, on the agenda, and uh, the next one is uh, the the an analysis of MIAD encapsulation methods uh, by G. Uh, so we, we did go over the action items and uh, I'll jump over to this item now. Okay, so let me share the screen now. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Jim, Jimmy. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. Yep. Okay. So here are some uh, analysis about the processing of the NPRS ISD and PSD from the hardware's perspective. I have discussed uh, with our hardware co colleagues and collect some of their opinions to show here. Uh, apparently I'm not a hardware expert. So if you have any 
questions or comments, I will take notes and uh, go back to ask them for confirmation. Okay. So first, uh, here are some uh, design principles from the hardware's perspective. Uh, the first one is, uh, I think this is maybe similar to something presented uh, last week. Uh, it is to, we, we should minimize the number of the headers in the packet, which means that uh, if possible, it is uh, better to have one integrated header to carry a set of uh, data instead of uh, using multiple headers, which are scattered in the packet. Um, the second one is, um, it is more efficient to locate the bottom stack bit than to locate a special label at, uh, which may be at the arbitrary position in the label stack. And the third one is, um, uh, we, should, uh, we should avoid popping the special label and the following data blocks at transit nodes, uh, which this is uh, aligned with the discussion we had about we should avoid the special label being exposed at the top label in the past. And to, to achieve this, um, maybe one approach is to uh, put a special label and the data at the bottom of the stack. The first one is, uh, um, if possible, they would like to avoid adding information into label stack, which may be different for different packets in the flow, because the change of the data in the label stack may have some impact on the label stack based load balancing for the legacy nodes. And the last one is, uh, which is also similar to the presentation last week, uh, the header chain based uh, processing is uh, per preferred over the bitmap based approach. So when do you want to take questions? Um, or comments? Anytime. Okay, um, let me start with the first one. Minimize the number of headers in the packet. I mean, we've got an ethernet header, we've got an MTLS header, we typically have an IP header, and then we have a transport header, what IP calls transport header. And if you have uh, IPv6, then you have a number of potential next header fields. So are we going to just go to ethernet or what are we gonna do if we want to use this particular approach? Really? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> can we, uh, I will try to answer some of this uh, question. Uh, to my understanding, uh, uh, the header here means um, uh, okay, uh, a data block or portion of the data which need to be parsed uh, uh, as a unit in the packet header. Like uh, I think uh, maybe traditionally we will treat the whole MPS label stack as a header, or if we have special labels in the header, they will uh, it they will use to identify some different processing following the, that label, right? So that uh, this will partition the label stack into multiple headers. This is uh, uh, so that they want, what they want is to minimize the partition of the like a, like a label stack or some traditionally we can process, process as a whole uh, header. And with the introdu introduction of the new special labels into inside to it, in, into it. Uh, it will need to be processed uh, separately as multiple headers. I understand that. I'm saying that we already have multiple headers. The uh, Ethernet yes. is, is ET the block and, of... uh, Just so that, because there are people who raise their hands as well. And uh, I'm, I'm okay, Kriti, to let you go through, but, um, you know, uh, we're asking people to use their hand, uh, you know, so that the order is maintained. Thanks a lot. Sure. Okay. Um, I, I just want to finish this one conversation. I'm also trying to figure out how to raise a hand, but um, I will do that once we sort of um, get past this conversation. The reason why I mentioned that we have multiple headers is whether you think of the label stack as one header per label, or you think of it as ISD and PSD, these are just small increments, when I receive a packet in, in the hardware, I have to first process the Ethernet header 
and decide what am I going to do with it, assuming it's an Ethernet packet, which pretty much is everything today. And then I have uh, to process the MPLS stack, and then I have to process potentially the IP header. So this idea that you minimize the headers is nice, but it's not a reality. It's uh, actually I'm done on this topic. Okay, may I may I explain a little bit more? So you're next. Go ahead. You are next. So let me go ahead and respond to that. Um, so the point here really is that there's a certain amount of state that we have to carry with each header. And I believe that the concern, and I can't really speak for anybody else, but um, I believe the concern is that we only have a certain amount of state, certain amount of registers that we can carry. And uh, the forwarding plane is somewhat limited. You can't really increase that a whole lot. Uh, without inc incurring a performance penalty. Uh, so minimizing the amount of state that we have to carry when we make a forwarding decision is very helpful. Yeah, I think this is also the consideration from the hardware people here. Is that, Tony. Karidi, is that clear? Okay. Um, yes, sorry, I was trying to find my mute button, yes. I uh, know I understand the I understand the idea, but um, anyway, okay. I'm good. <clears throat> All right. The point I wanted to raise: um, my understanding of hardware is that locating the bottom of the stack is not necessarily an easy thing to do for all hardware. Uh, the issue is that again, there's only so much uh, state that the, the hardware has available. If the stack the label stack is large, it may not have read all the way to the bottom of the stack into the die at um, forwarding time. And so looking to the bottom of the stack may actually require more external reads, and that may be a significant performance penalty. So uh, the trade-off between putting things in the stack and at the bottom of the stack, I don't think is quite that obvious. Um, and it may vary from hardware platform to hardware platform. Yeah, uh, I think this assumption is uh, based on that. Uh, um, they can read the, the bottom stack uh, without like a additional. Uh, how to say that in the without do that uh, multiple times, right? This is uh, maybe. The hardware from our hardware design, really the bottom stack usually is not uh, like a, a big issue. Uh, Tony, you're still raising your hand. Do you do you want to continue to, or are you done with your question? I'm sorry, I'll break, lower my hand. Okay, uh, I, Greg, you're next. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I can. Thank you. I appreciate recognizing. Okay, uh, I have some comments on this uh, requirements and questions. Um, on the second bullet about efficiency. Um, so when you say more efficient to locate, uh, is it means that look doing the lookups? Hmm. I think because one, because the one, bottom one, stack is the, the fixed position in the label stack entry. Uh, uh, in, in my understanding, they just need to check this bit uh, to, until you find uh, one. Yeah, because uh, uh, one actually. of the uh, possible uh, techniques that can be used is uh, when their uh, MIAD encoding uses uh, explicit uh, length um, so that uh, to faster find uh, the bottom of the stack. So there, then there will be no need to do a lookup once uh, you uh, find their uh, MIAD block. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing what I would like to say is that similar to what Tony said is that um, bottom placing the MIAD uh, block at the bottom of the stack uh, would be the same challenge as we know from um, entropy label indicator. So the um, stack depth uh, for different uh, hardware is different. Um, and I, I agree 
would the uh, bullet three avoid adding information uh, to the stack? Because yes, that can definitely uh, confuse things. Uh, but I don't really understand what the last one means, what it means like header chains. So if it could be uh, more as an image. I think this is uh, based on the analysis from how you uh, presentation he compared the header chain based uh, approach and the bitmap based approach and for the parser and uh, his, I think his analysis shows that header chain based approach has a more re require more uh, less overhead that is my if my memory is correct it is about the parser process mm, processing Okay, uh, then I'll, I'll go look at it. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, so, uh, Kriti, we... and then I'll go next. I did uh, raise my hand after you, but it doesn't show in the queue. Go ahead, Kriti. Um, actually, I do see your hand raised, but um, I had another point about um, your bullet four. Adding information into the label stack may change per packet. I guess you mean load balancing. Um, and I I agree that that's the case. I also think that um, we as uh, an industry have been doing weird sort of approaches to label uh, stack, uh, I mean, sorry, to, to load balancing. And so we've, we've looked for the end of stack and then looked for the first label and said, oh, that looks like an IPv4 header. And uh, one of the things that the first label, the first nibble registry document talks about is let's stop doing that. Uh, we should not be using these kind of uh, heuristics which, which could often go wrong. The other thing that we've been doing is um, parsing the label stack and, and taking everything that doesn't look like a special purpose label and putting that into our um, entropy generation. We have a good way of doing this. It's called entropy label. Let's just use entropy label and let's not do these hacks because um, it's going to really constrain what we can do and uh, cannot do with the label stack. So um, I, I agree that there is a potential issue here, but I think that we have created it for ourselves and we should stop doing hacks and we should start doing this in a better, a more systematic way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Kriti, uh, for your comments. And uh, I think we had some discussion about this before. Actually, in the entropy label RFC, it uh, does not mandate to uh, uh, identify the entropy label indicator and only use the entropy label for the load balancing. I think um, there are implementations which uh, still use the whole label stack except the special labels for the load balancing so that the benefit is that they don't need to, the transient nodes don't, don't need to uh, identify the entropy label indicator. And there's, even if there are legacy devices which do not understand the entropy label, they can still do this, some um, such kind of uh, load balancing based on uh, the traditional approach, which is used the whole label stack. So well, just um, to finish maybe. That. Sorry, um, just to finish that thought, there are also uh, uh, implementations that look for the end of stack, look for the first nibble, and then if it is four, they'll say, oh, I have an IP header, and this has been proved to be wrong, and yet they do that. So telling me that there's legacy equipment that does stupid things is not helping. Uh, I mean, mm. what I'm saying is going forward, we should come up with a mechanism that is a lot you know, more robust and more more systematic. So yes, the entropy label uh, RFC did not say you must look for this um, because not clear that every hardware could at the time, but I think we need to start getting a you know better handle on load balancing, especially because we've, it's been proven that um, not load balancing correctly can be an issue for the end host. Um, okay, next, uh, I think I'm next and then Loa. Um, 
my question is about suggest to put the special pur purpose label uh, and data at the bottom of stack. And uh, there are cases where uh, you want to repeat the special purpose label in the stack so that you, uh, you know, assist the node uh, uh, through the readable depth uh, to reach that special purpose label. Um, as you know, the, there are uh, readable depth uh, that nodes can read through and you may want to repeat that special purpose label. So uh, I don't know if the, it's a recommendation or, uh, you know, having it at the bottom of the stack, but maybe we, we there there are cases that we need to multiple times or keep it in the stack. Uh, uh, that's number one. And number two is uh, the last bullet. My understanding, the bitmap is not eliminating the header chain. Uh, at least this is my understanding is it's a complementary uh, to the to the to the um, you know having the TLVs after the uh, bottom of stack. Uh, so the header chains may coexist with the bitmap. So that's my uh, recollection. So it's not like one is is competing with the other one. The way you um, formulated it, it's like header chains are. Preferred over bitmap. Yeah, this is a, yeah. Um, let me answer your comments one by one. And the first one is uh, as I as it, sh it shows here, if we uh, encapsulate the special label and the data uh, multiple times in the label stack, then it means that the transient nodes will need to pop the forward uh, tunnel label, then see this special label and need to pop the special label, then the data blocks. This is some special processing which is required on the transient nodes, which is, in, in my understanding, we discussed to award to, to expose the top label at the, the, the special Say label at pop. the top of the stack. Are you saying pop? Did you say pop? Pop, yes. No, we, we don't want to, we want to read, not pop, read. So reading is different than popping. Mm, if I can jump after in. reading, you need to pop it, right? So if I can jump in, I think what uh, Gia is referring to is if, you, if you're doing a, more of a segment routing, you know, pop, pop, pop kind of uh, label stack, then if you put a, a, a special purpose label, maybe it's right now six labels deep, but as you go through uh, the path, you're popping the labels. And at some point, that special purpose label will be exposed to, uh, you know, to the top of stack. And what we say in the FAI document is at that point, you have to pop the special purpose label as well as all its associated data so that you can get to the next forwarding label. Um, and so what, what is being suggested here is avoid doing that. Um, if you avoid doing that, you cannot have any type of special purpose label uh, because uh, anything that's in the stack, you will have to do something with. So um, I understand what they're trying to say. I, it just doesn't parse for me. Uh, yeah, Jay, if I mis misstated what you said, uh, please correct me. I, I think uh, that what you said uh, is correct. It is what is what they want to uh, express with this uh, bullet, because they see this as a, a special processing on the transient nodes, which uh, they would like to avoid. Uh, and perhaps they will add more complexity to the processing. You know, if only the egress node will pop the special label and the, the data, that's fine. And for the transient node, it is uh, at more uh, complex complexity, and uh, you we need to consider the backward co uh, compatibility of the legacy transient nodes. And for the last one, I think it uh, we just compare the header chain based approach with uh, with the bitmap based approach. They may coexist. Uh, uh, based on the design, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I think uh, John Drake is in the queue. 
I was just going to say, Tarek, that I agree with you. What we're, we're carrying the, uh, the bitmap in the label stack, and we're probably going to have header change for the post stack data. Thank you. Okay. Well, so, you are next. I, I um, see. Okay. Next. Uh, oh, yeah, it's the first time I have, have a clarification question uh, to Tarek. You said uh, we may have a multiple, this is special label um, duplicated in one package. Um, what's the reason for that? I uh, kind of lose. Um, sure. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, I tried to make it clear, but uh, maybe I it didn't get through. So there is a limitation of how far deep, you know, you can, and a node can read uh, uh, to, to reach your special purpose label. So that's called the usually readable label depth or readable yeah. depth. And, um, you know, I understand that the, st the, the label stack will shrink as the packet is forwarded in the network. Uh, but considerations by the head end or whoever is imposing or composing the label stack will need to make sure that if I insert a special purpose label anywhere in the label stack, any transit node that needs to read it will be able to read it. And there are cases when the label stack is, is large enough that a transit node will not be able to read it. And that will be the case where you want to repeat uh, your uh, special purpose label. Oh, 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 okay. So, so first, I want to understand what's the typical readable depth of the label stack. Uh, that's very important. The second, I think, um, we are talking about uh, this indicator. Uh, it may indicate uh, uh, the existence of uh, post stack data. If we can only read uh, that uh, depth. Um, then means it means we cannot read further than then the label itself is useless because after we reach there we cannot uh, um, continue to get data behind it then what's the point to have it oh, so we have okay. to assume uh, we we can continue to read um, I think that's a basic assumption okay so th let me just quickly answer, try to answer and i'll let uh, the room you know uh, also uh, give a chance for them to pitch in so indeed uh, you know there are cases where the action doesn't carry data like there there will be a flag with no data so it's only an and a request to invoke an action so that's number that's a case where we we don't need to go to post stack data at all and the second is uh, Sometimes, you know, reading, it's not like I cannot read, a transit node cannot read uh, further than the readable depth, but the packet will be recycled and the throughput uh, performance hit might be incurred if you want to read uh, far, farther or for, further or farther. So it's not like you cannot read uh, uh, further, but it will, there will be a cost if you, uh, if you do it. Thank you. Yeah, actually, we have some further uh, comparison analysis about some options of the encapsulation in the following slide. So maybe we can um, uh, move forward. Jimmy, oh, there, are, there, have are some... people, there are two okay. people still in the so queue. I cannot see, see the. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 there are two, uh, two, two people in the queue. Do you want to take the questions now, or? Okay, sure, sure. John, you still have your hand uh, raised. John Drake. Okay, uh, Loa, you're next. Um... Hey, Tarek. I, I'm trying to understand what actually bullet number two on this slide actually says. Does it actually say that you want to? put the special purpose label uh, as the label that carry the boss bit set. Uh, so it will be at bottom of stack. Is that what, what you're trying to do? Uh, you mean the special purpose label itself is uh, at the bottom stack? Yeah. Yeah, this is a uh, bit, um, Based on this analysis, uh, um, 
we think it is more efficient to, to locate uh, the special purpose label if, if it is at the bottom stack. Uh, because uh, finding the bottom stack, uh, you just need to check the bottom stack bit uh, instead of the, to match the whole label field um, in the whole label stack. So one comment to that is that we actually tried that a couple of times. Uh, so allocating or putting special information, for example, the gal at the bottom of stack. And like one or two years later, we all, always have to revisit that and change it. Uh, so why are we not? to have the same problem here. Yeah, I understand that <clears throat> actually we have the gal at the bottom stack, mm, but that is only for the OEM traffic and it is not uh, allowed to to be encapsulated for the user data. Um, but if uh, we consider this um, yeah, uh, mechanism is only used for the user data traffic, um, in my understanding, it, it is uh, okay and not conflict with the gal. If we design, uh, define another special purpose label and uh, to make it uh, fixed at the bottom stack, uh, um, I don't have any special cases, cases which uh, would require both of this new special label and the gal coexist in the package. Is there any? Special cases in your mind? Uh, the, the point I'm trying to make is that as soon as we actually prescribe where a certain label should be found, for example, as the bottom, as the label carrying the bottom of stack bit, uh, we always have had to revisit that to change it. We, I, I don't know, I don't think we have any requirements for any label to actually be at the, the bottom of stack just now. Is a gal is an uh, example of this? You mean except uh, gal? Uh, I, would like, I would like Stu at the Matthew to respond to that, but I don't think so. What was the question? Is it, a, is it a requirement that the gal is at the bottom of stack? Um, I am trying to think because I think there might be a subtle case where it's not required to be at the bottom of the stack, but can be um, one away from it. Okay, uh, if I may, because uh, working on um, for uh, 8595, um, we had a good discussion with uh, uh, Sasha. Um, okay, there is a strict requirement for MPLS uh, TP environment that uh, GAL label is at the bottom of the stack. Uh, the ROC um, is not uh, explicitly clear, but right. in, in, in our uh, for non MPLS TP environment. But in our discussion with uh, Sasha and the uh, response we received uh, from the uh, group at the time, so it was uh, that de facto expectation is that Gal is at the bottom of the stack. So the, I'm trying to think if there, what happens when you have a fat label down there? Um, yeah. I can't remember what the possible sequence for gal fat label and um and uh well can you have that sequence a gal of fat with a gal of fat label and um a pseudo i label in there because yeah it's, it's it's a good question because um i don't think that uh anyone looked at um applicability of gal in the pseudo wire because, no because uh, pseudo wire has its own Pseudowire had its own method. Right. Um, uh, but what happened in MPLS TP? I can't remember that either. 
Did that uh, that had a gal for for um the MSTP does not allow ECMP? Correct, correct, correct. So it can't have the fat label there. So can it have a gal at the bottom of stack for uh, for, for OAM? Uh, it, it it doesn't really require that because no, uh, no I don't think it requires. Yeah, because yeah. ACH um, is actually uh, GACH is extension generalization of ACH oh, yeah. uh, paradigm. So I think it's one of those things. I can't see why it wouldn't be uh, at the bottom of the stack. It's pretty dangerous if it ever appears um, above. A, uh, if it ever gets popped, um, so it, it it's pretty dangerous if it appears above um, a um, you know an instruction label to say do something. Um, uh, go on. Yeah, what we had a, a use case for eighty five ninety five is that if this uh, basic element that defined there, so it's a two uh, label element mm. that emulates MSH. Mm. Um, so if if the payload is OEM, uh, effectively uh, we don't want to pass it to a uh, service function, uh, and we have this functionality that uh, how we can do it in uh, real NSH uh, in SFC NSH uh, encapsulation, but uh, with the label emulating it, um, and if gal is at the bottom of the stack, then what we have to say that oh, every time you are processing. Uh, this SFF is processing uh, um, emulated NSH. It needs to look at the bottom of the stack, whether it's GAL or not. So that was problematic. And that's why we were uh, looking for a solution that in the stacking uh, mode, uh, then uh, to have the indication uh, in this basic element. If I can jump in. Um... Two two points. One is we we're kind of rat holing here because um, I think the question that Loa asked is if you put something or if you if you require that a particular label be at the bottom of stack, you could get in trouble. We did that with the label zero, and we had to undo that. But um, specifically for Gal, since we're here, section four point two of RFC fifty five eighty six says in MKLSTP Gal must be at the bottom of stack. Um, however, in other MPLS environments, this document places no restriction on where the GAL may appear. And the second thing is GAL must not be there for transporting normal user plane packets. So it's a, the GAL is a pretty restricted type of label. Um, I think Loa's high order point is, um, you know, we don't have a restriction on any other label, special purpose label that must appear at the bottom of stack, not for GAL, not for the zero label, which used to be, it must be at the bottom of stack, but no longer is. So I think that's the higher, higher a bit, and we should probably stop rat holding. Okay, um, I just uh, see John still raising his hand. I'm not sure if uh, by mistake or you want to ask a question? Okay. Um, hmm. It lo looks like you're double clicking, so you're still raising your hand, John. Um, I, I you can proceed, Jimmy. I, I think uh, no one. In okay. Huh? Oh, I can hear you. What I look? It says I don't have my hand raised. It it it, it you does do. show. You do. <laughs> Now is, it? Now is now good. Now you don't. Okay. Um, let's go to the next page. Okay. So here we uh, list uh, several options of carrying this uh, data and the indicator uh, in the label stack or the post label stack. And we did some comparison about the overhead of cost in, from, in different uh, like, uh, aspects. Okay, the first one, I think this is a basic uh, approach which we discussed <clears throat> which, uh, to have this uh, indicator label and this ISD like uh, after all the transport labels, after all the tunnel labels. But the VPN label may 
below it the SD data. The second option is like uh, we discussed, uh, we have multiple uh, of this uh, indicator label and ISD uh, in the label stack to help the interesting nodes to read it. And the PSD can, um, uh, is below the bottom step, stack. In the third option is like uh, based on the uh, uh, design principles in the previous page, uh, like it is to it suggests to only have this post stack data after the label stack and use the, uh, the indicator label uh, at the bottom stack to indicate that there's a PSD in the packet. So uh, here on the right side, the uh, uh, table we compare the overhead in each line and you think I, I can read it or you want to look at it and read some comments. Uh, the we can see that the, for the red uh, color one, we show that there's some concerns about either the cost of the like the uh, special processing or the com uh, complexity in the processing. Uh, we need to um, pay attention to. Tony, you you're you're free to ask your question. Um, so yeah, you've got on option three here, you say the cost of finding the ADI is low because you can use the S bit to find the bottom of the stack, but don't you still have to scan the entire label stack to find the S bit? I don't understand just, how this is low. This is yeah, you just need to read the, the S the bottom uh, the S bit field. You don't need to parse the whole label entry. Right, because of the yes, has bit have, it in the fixed uh, position. I I agree. You have more bits you have to compare, but at the same time, the cost is uh, not. You you claim that the problem on the other two is you have to scan the whole label stack. Well, you have to scan the whole label stack to find the set S bit too. Yeah, but just to um, to compare one bit for each uh, label stack entry. As opposed to doing the, a 20 bit compare, and yes, I acknowledge it, that's slightly um, harder. Friends, I just raised my hand uh, and some comments. Let Tony finish while you. He raised his hand as well. Yeah, I understand his question. I'm trying to respond. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. I thought, okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so um, if, if uh, this. Uh, um, you, you only need to uh, check one location at the bottom stack. It's, it, 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 uh, the cost low is because if, uh, if uh, it can be at arbitrary location, then at every label, you need to do actual work to examine the other part of the label. And you can, uh, this, uh, uh, if you um, really um, design the hardware, you'll find uh, actually uh, it's a lot of cost. Because uh, you need to re replicate all the state here um, for for the for the for the exam in just one location, and the second you said um, you we still need to scan through the label stack. That's true, um, but uh, uh, scan the label is very fast. This is just a, a a few cycles. You don't need to other any other um, you know check, right? That that uh, means it's a linear to the depths of the uh, uh, label label stack. So uh, I think the here the cost comparison is, uh, is from that point of view. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding that either. You you still haven't said things that make sense. Um, um, it, you, any way you do this, you have to do a linear scan through the stack. Right, right. Linear, uh, I, what I mean is uh, scan through the label stack, the cost is low. It's, it's a, if you just uh, all those you know all those uh, labels are just uh, normal normal uh, ampere's label, then you just uh, use a, a one clock cycle to or one or two clock cycle to 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 uh, scan scan one label until you reach the uh, bottom stack because uh, each step you only need to examine if it's a bottom stack or not. Then when okay. it, Bottom stack, you check the other part of the label. So that's that's 
that cause it, it, alone. But uh, if is it, isn't, it, isn't it highly isn't it highly dependent on your implementation structure? So, for example, you could do it in a single cycle if the whole thing was in a set of registers, but it depends on the uh, implementation architecture. Yes, yeah, so that's that's all. That if you do that, that will incur higher costs. If we normalize that to the uh, number of uh, state in the state machine and the depths of the uh, no, it depends on your. I think it depends on your implementation architecture. You could take the whole of the header into a uh, into a hardware register, and you could look at the S bit concurrently in a big and in a big OR gate. Yes, I, well, that's what I mean. If you do that, so your state machine will be huge because uh, not necessarily. The, Why the bit might might uh, appear in any location? You have to cover all that, all those possibilities to to in order to not miss it. I, I, again, I still think it depends on your implementation structure. I think you have a particular implementation structure in mind. I think in the general case, it um, um, it doesn't it, 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 it's not necessarily applicable. You could align the front of the stack to a particular location in memory and then do the whole thing in parallel if you wanted to. This uh, uh, what what I try to stress is it doesn't matter what imp implementation you have, the underlying principle is the same. Now you can throw in more hardware to do that uh, faster. That's true, but that's incur hardware cost as well. Well, okay. Let me put it a different way. The way you've described this and the trade offs you're making here may be very specific to your implementation. I don't think they generalize very well. Uh, please lower your hand after you ask your question so that you can leave room for the next person. Uh, John Drake, you're next. I was just going to point out that the scheme number three, option number three, uh, basically edicts that you cannot put another special purpose label in the stack. And I don't think that that's sensible. <clears throat> Sorry, John, I didn't get, you mean uh, we need uh, more than one special purpose label or? Yeah, what? Well, no, the point is you're assuming that there is only, there's one and only one special purpose label and it's at the bottom of the stack. That's not. Well, yeah, I think he's assuming there's an ADI at the bottom of the stack. Um, no, uh, well, he's still going to have to process looking for other special purpose labels in the stack. Oh, you're correct, uh, of course, yes, yes. Yeah, this is also what we pre, uh, propose to reduce the number of uh, special labels, purpose labels uh, in the label stack. If we possible, we can uh, one to indicate um, not, uh, the data which need to be assessed. It's uh, it's in to a say special. That can only be for, for the rest of eternity, there's only going to be one special purpose label. And it's at the bottom of the stack. It's completely unrealistic. Agreed. Yeah, I agree with that. What? What? Okay, uh, Jamie, yes. Go ahead. I I just wanted to inform you that no no one in the queue. That's it. So it's back to you. Okay, so I uh, assume you finished uh, uh, to read the, the, this uh, table. So this computer still... shows that uh, from. Do you have still slides or uh, you're done? If you have uh, for one more slide, uh, I want to maybe give a brief uh, conclusion here. Give the conclusion. What's your conclusion? What's your conclusion, Jimmy? Hello? I think his slide is stuck. Okay, you can hear me then. No, stop. Inside. I can hear you, yes. I can't hear Jimmy though, or GA. Yeah. Okay, oh. uh, if uh, there's no questions, I will move to the last page. 
there is no questions right now. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So here are some uh, maybe considerations and for the discussion. I think some of them has already been raised uh, during this presentation. Uh, the first one is uh, we need to understand uh, whether we can carry all the type of uh, accelerated data in the ISD. Uh, I think the answer is probably no. So we need the PSD anyway. Uh, the second is um, do we need to carry the hop by hop data in the PSD? The one of the example we have is um, to do the hop by hop IOM. Uh, and this case means that um, the transit node will need to be able to pass the PSD. So they need to have this capability if we they want to uh, support the full uh, feature of the MIAD. Um, and the third one is um, we need to be really serious about how much do we plan to change this MPS label stack. Uh, the encoding and the parsing and the processing all need to be modified if we carry them. Uh, data or flags in the label entries, which was used to carry the label TTL and the and TC field. Uh, in that case, uh, there may be some backward compatibility issues like uh, the expose of the special label and the data to in the to the legacy nodes. It may, it may, it may be very dangerous and can get packet dropped or miss uh, processing. Uh, the fourth uh, item shows that uh, we think uh, if we carry data in the MPS label stack entry, there has some limitations in the scalability and also the extensibility because the length of the label stack entry uh, is uh, fixed to the 32 bit and uh, we cannot use this bit any data, which means that we need we cannot can carry continuous data, which is larger than uh, how many bits, uh, like uh, 24 bit. Uh, so which means that we still, if we have some data, which we, uh, is larger than that, and which need uh, a more scalable, uh, more flexible format, we still need to find another way to carry it. Kriti, I see that you're uh, in the queue. Do you want to ask questions? Um, question? Yeah, I have uh, two comments. Um, actually, three comments. So one is for the first one. Uh, if not, we need PSD anyway. It's for me. It's like saying, can we keep all data in memory? If not, we need disk anyway. Of course, we need disk. That doesn't mean memory doesn't have any purpose. It doesn't mean that a cache doesn't have any purpose. I see the ISD as a cache, something that you can reach quickly with relatively little overhead, uh, and also many more routers can reach it. And so just because we would need PSD as anyway, doesn't mean uh, ISD is not useful. The second thing I want to say is, um, do we need PSD for HPH data? Yes, um, but, but uh, there we have to be very careful that if we put data that must be processed uh, in uh, PSD. Uh, we have to understand that either we route the packet through nodes that can always reach the PSD, or we have to accept that some routers will not be able to do it, and it should be okay. So I, IOM, for example, if some routers do not process the IOM, it's not the end of the world. You won't get the most accurate data, but at least you can proceed. Whereas if you put something like uh, a slice ID in the PSD and a router can't reach it, then you're going to uh, not treat the packet and your end-to-end -end guarantees may not be met. And the last thing I will say is that backward compatibility may become a big concern. So we have that statement here in the chat, how you says this is only for new, new um, new hardware, I, I think that's not really how we should be thinking about this. I think this is something that Stuart would agree with. Um, backward compatibility must always be in our uh, in our 
view front and center, we can find ways to work around it, but we cannot ignore it. Um, yeah, you're I'm done. To get, you're always going to get legacy packets. As you mentioned right now, you're always going to get legacy packets in the network. You're always going to get legacy hardware in the network. Exactly. Uh, you you could perhaps, but with great limitation and huge amounts of sort of deployment issues, decide that an LSP in a mixed network uh, had to be pure new hardware. But that would be all kinds of operational and deployment uh, constraints. So I think you have to. We have to be backwards compatible, or at least backwards benign. Um, why you? Is it a quick question? Uh, uh, go ahead, or or Kriti, if you, you still have your hand raised. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so um, first, I I I think uh, Kriti uh, first said that uh, we, um, uh, we we, oh, second, then 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 first I respond to um uh, Sewer's um comments that I think, um, if if we um build this uh, um new system in uh. A limited domain, for example, we upgrade all the devices in the network, then we will have a situation that uh, all the devices will uh, understand the new um, the new architecture, and there will be no legacy uh, devices and the legacy packets. So in that situ situation, uh, we can uh, um, uh, support this new function, right? Um, if it is a an entirely new um, network with entirely uh, new functionality, you might actually be better off designing an entirely new protocol instead of working around some of the history of MPLS. I mean, so so yeah, I I, I just uh, think um, uh, it will be very hard for us to. Uh, keeps the backward compatibility uh, with this uh, um, drastic uh, new design. I think, uh, you know, um, uh, we will have this new special label and we will have a new encapsulation on the uh, data. All of those will not be on the definitely will not be on stand by legacy nodes, right? So I, I just think it's uh, if we uh, enforce these requirements, that will be very hard for, for the design. So that's my comments, and the, then the then, then to the um, question uh, uh, to the to the comments of Kriti, um, it seems he uh, he uh, suggests that uh, um, uh, we have this uh, ISD because uh, it allow us to uh, at least uh, to support some of the functions which can be located in the stack. Um, that's true, but. But we we have to differentiate what must be um, understand by the um, um, uh, uh, by the by the node or what cannot uh, what what may not uh, we can afford to not understand because this uh, this uh, enforce a limitation that anything uh, if uh, it, its size is too big cannot fit in the label stack then it has to be put into the post stack data right then. It also implies for those data, the candidate uh, might not be processed at all. So it see, it seems uh, to me the size here is a hard uh, limitation. Um, but it, it regardless whether or not it should be uh, processed or not. So um, with this limitation, then. It se seems we are at mercy of the uh, data itself, not. Uh, actual requirement of node. So um, I I don't think we have a, a good way to um, handle this situation. Okay, I, I see Tony is uh, raising his hand, 
and if not, uh, if by mistake, we can go to Greg. Uh, do you want to ask? Okay, yeah. go ahead. So, uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, we have tier 1 providers where the software upgrade time to upgrade the entire network. Just the software is 2 years. Um, upgrading the hardware. Um, well, in chat, uh, Ignis has said 6 to 8 years. Um, I know of people who are running hardware that is even older than that. Um, so expecting a, a ubiquitous hardware upgrade on a tier one provider, uh, you know, you're probably talking 10 to 20 years. Uh, and that's just not useful. So we have to deal with backward compatibility issue. Greg? Yes, thank you. Yes, um, I absolutely agree with their um, position that uh, backward compatibility and uh, deploying uh, incremental deployment in existing environment uh, where their um, boxes not only require software upgrade, but might uh, have um, lower processing power um, and they still want to be uh, able uh, to use their enhanced MPLS architecture selectively uh, is an important consideration. So uh, I believe that the requirement document is um, points to the uh, the right direction. That um, the work that we're doing here uh, must be. Uh, supported by enhancements in uh, control and management uh, plane. So uh, I believe that uh, capability advertisements in uh, dynamic routing protocol and uh, appropriate uh, updates to Yang data models. Uh, but yes, there must be a way for a system to indicate uh, support or no support uh, or actually um, realize the support and non-support of these enhancements and then be able to do it on a um, uh, more feature by feature uh, level as well. Okay. So that's a, a question I've got. Well, I think it's my answer. Um, so, I can imagine that there are some greenfield sites, to be fair. I imagine, though, they're not the sites that we normally sort of work to. So, for example, I could see that rolling out a, um, a 5G sort of um, um, network might possibly be a greenfield site. Um, I'm just not sure um, whether even those are in practice. Um, where, so, I don't know where you find these greenfield sites. Maybe you can tell me that the 5G stuff is all is all um, greenfield. Right. right, well, I think that we're always going to have to deal with um, our other equipment that's in there. And we need to be scrupulously careful with how we uh, how we deal with that. Yeah, I think uh, some of the transit nodes may may not to be that uh, may not be able to be upgraded or replaced uh, quickly. And Maybe the up nodes can be upgraded it, more frequently. But it's transit nodes where all the problem applies. I mean, at the at the endpoints, you can put whatever junk you want wherever you want, and it's private matter between the two endpoints. It, all of the discussion and all the difficulty happens on the transit nodes. Yes, I agree. Not quite. And ingress, you know, can always decide to do it or not do it. The egress would have to process things. And um, if the answer is pop it to the software, that's usually a very bad answer. So oh, I won't say that, the, but but of course the ingress can make sure the egress can do it. Exactly. Uh, I would I, I, I would say ninety five percent of the problems are in the transit nodes, but there is a non trivial piece in the ingress as well. 
So, so ingress is work, right? But you no, sorry, you not ingress, it, egress, egress. Yeah, yeah ingress is, is is work. You have to do this. Um, yes. E egress. Um, well, I've always worked on the assumption, CDU, if you send a packet to an egress node that can't handle it, uh, when the whole of MPLS is sort of full of that uh, piece of fundamental uh, design philosophy, and you can always uh, you can always check that. Um, the the real real problem is those nodes in the middle which could be there servicing hundreds of other applications and um uh, maybe maybe we that, should do mpls over avian carrier maybe that's an answer uh, mpls over hf radio is an interesting um current project i was joking but that's okay <laughs> no 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 certain events are causing people to wonder what we're going to carry over hf radio you you're next go ahead you have your raised uh, your hand raised on you yeah yeah so it's just a, a thought that it, uh, if we have to maintain a certain level of uh, backward compatibility then uh, it seems uh, uh, putting the special label in the bottom stack is the most, uh, you know, uh, is the best way to me at least, because in most of the um, uh, nodes on the in the MPS domain, it might just uh, process a top top of label, and uh, it ne will never look uh, further. Even look further, they will find uh, maybe they will try to find the entropy uh, label, but it's still before the bottom stack. So. Um, so uh, it seems if uh, the puts a special label and the bottom stack and uh, all the other uh, data post stack is the most uh, least uh, disturbing way to introduce uh, new features. Yeah, I think this along with the, the third bullet on this page. Tony, you're, uh, you're next with your question, Tony. I disagree. I, I think that, that we've got more stuff out there deployed that's got a small readable stack depth. And uh, I think you're going to have a real hard time getting to the bottom stack. But uh, the uh, nodes with that uh, limitation, maybe just as a legacy nodes, if for the new hardware, which uh, can pass the well, so longer. I can on, on just new hardware. Can, can I ask a question uh, from, from where we, we may have a data point, right? Um, we, we've got a load of SR stuff deployed and MSD is one of the parameters that we signal. What typical values are people signaling? I've seen six to 10. Six on some platforms is a is a number I've seen, and ten also on other platforms. There are platforms that can do much more than ten, but six is something I've seen, and maybe there is lower than six. Right. So those platforms are going to be really stressed by all this extra stuff we're planning to add in here. Uh, you mean for six or ten? Either of them are going to be a bit stressed. Whatever they are, they're going to be stressed by the addition of extra uh, labels. And they will be completely useless if it's all at the bottom of stack. Exactly. I see. And yes. So all the six. So all the sixes are probably off the table, right? Because they already are st stressing to do the six with some of this SR stuff. Um, Ten is probably also going to be stressed, isn't it? But consider if you have only. The reasonable depth is the six, um, and you need yeah. to uh, carry this uh, a, uh, indicator label and ISD multiple times in this uh, label field. Yeah, but then you just stress the, the push, the amount you push you at, at ingress. Right. You right. Multiple times. You're just burning. Yeah. Sorry, Matthew. Um, I put in the chat uh, a pointer on, to an RFC about entropy label and spring. And there the point is that you repeat the entropy label plus uh, the ELI plus EL every um, readable depth. Um, so if your readable depth is uh, three, 
then you're in the worst possible case where after every forwarding label, you put ELI, EL, and then next forwarding label, ELI, EL. And as Matthew said, you're really going to stress the in ingress in terms of pushing a 30 label stack when you want to go 10 hops. Um, but if it is more than that, then the overhead becomes slightly better. But the idea is that um, if so, if your readable depth is five, as I Inyas was saying, then you would have um, four labels ELI EL, and then you'd have four labels, e oh, sorry, three labels ELI EL, three labels ELI EL. Um, and I mean, in principle, the FAI or uh, ADI label and block could be bigger than that. But a lot of what we're looking at is in the range of two or three labels for, for that. And so it would be similar. For 10, it would be a little more comfortable. Um, but so, but if you said everything has to be at the bottom of stack, life becomes very difficult for a lot of uh, existing routers. Yeah, this is also an analysis about this overhead and the complexity for the ingress node to encapsulate multiple this, uh, ISDs in the label stack. But I agree with the uh, capability of the node increase. And I feel uh, the situation can be better for both uh, options. Um, Do you have anything else, uh, Jimmy? No, I think this is uh, all the okay. materials I have. There's still uh, two, two uh, questions in the queue to be asked. And uh, we just a uh, heads up, we are almost running out of time. Uh, so go ahead, John. Uh, with your question. I was just going to follow up on Karidi's point um, about the entropy label being multiple places in the stack. It actually turns out in 6790, uh, we also talked about having it multiple times in the stack. Because even when you're doing swapping, there are cases where you're going to have to have multiple copies of the entry, entropy label. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I have a question about, is there any way to discover what's the minimum um, discoverable, uh, I mean, reachable label depths, uh, stack depths. Um, because that information seems critical uh, for for the head node to actually uh, replicate uh, uh, some some special labels, like say EL, uh, EL. Uh, without that information, it and could be, uh, if you, it could be still make some node cannot reach it, or if you replicate too many times, that's a, certainly, uh, it's a waste of, resource right? header or head so in principle it's it's distributed in the igp and uh, so if someone can do path computation saying if i'm going down this path then um, if i put it at this depth all these nodes can can see it and then i get to that next node and say okay i put one more there and so it can be done in principle that the computations are not uh, rocket science and of course, it starts with people distributing it in the IGP in the first place. I, I thought there was a, uh, a draft and maybe it's an RFC now. I need to double check. Uh, maybe an action item is to, uh, uh, you know, give you a reference for you on that. For MSD or a readable label that. Yeah, I think we call it RSD, but anyway, yeah. I think it's MRLD, isn't it? Um, maximum readable or minimum readable label depth. Uh, that was RF. Well, it, it the way it's distributed in IGP. Uh, just looking for the reference because we referenced it in the requirements. Um, RFC 9088, okay. it's, it's, it's a signaling. 
Anyway. Next. There, there was a lot of discussion of this around entropy label over a number of years. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Matthew, on reference. Um, we're running out of time, actually past uh, our time. There was couple more items on the agenda today that so, could, so what, what what is what is the conclusion from this piece of work please so we don't lose the conclusion yeah that's a good question uh, um, um there were points that were controversial Stuart. i uh, i there are some con still controversial there are assumptions that you know assertions that uh, jimmy was trying to make uh but uh, you know um i don't think we got from the ground any um conclusion or convergence on some of these uh, assumptions or assertions yeah maybe we can start with uh, some design principles from different uh, uh hardwares right whether which bullets are the common case for the most of the hardwares this can be helpful right yeah, but there were, you know, there were some uh, concerns raised with your uh, points that you were trying to make. So let me rephrase something that's attributed to Einstein. Minimize the header of number of headers in the packet to the minimum, but no less. Uh, I think trying to use this argument that we are trying to minimize the headers um, means we shouldn't do ISD is. Uh, Wrong thinking. So, I, I think you could say minimize the number of um, information elements in the uh, in the header. I think that would be a reasonable thing to say. Um, I think you no, could I, say, I, I, minimize I, the amount of state. Yeah, exactly. The state, not, not, state, but not over minimize things. I think is the point. Right. Exactly. So. I'm all for keeping things simple, but but if you make it o overly simple, we don't need MPLS. We can just go well, back to IP. No, no, no. If you make it overly simple, you make it really hard for the next generation who want to do something else to it. That's the problem with oversimplification. I mean, you can build up the problem. It's it, it. If you over optimize at this stage. Then the next, uh, the, you know, the thing you forgot to add becomes a nightmare to include in the design at a later date. And, and that I always, I always stick with the elegance of MPLS was that actually the original design made it incredibly easy to do all those things you forgot you wanted to do when you designed it to start with. So what we need to do is to leave it in that same state, don't we? Which is to uh, add these extra features, but um, do it in such a way that um, uh, it doesn't damage the stuff we had in the past and it doesn't damage the stuff we want to do in the future. Especially the latter, yeah. Uh, yes. Both, both. I agree, both. 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 So this was obviously a discussion we needed to have. I'm not sure we entirely finished the discussion, uh, and I'm not quite sure how what uh, truths, uh, what absolute truths we can write down in order to judge uh, which of those paths is the best one to go. If it was easy, we would have done it. So is the conclusion that there is no conclusion, at least so far? I don't think there's a conclusion, do you? No. I mean, there's a very, there's, there's a, there's a great attractiveness, and I know other people have, have also proposed it, about going to um, the third method here, which is just to put everything at the bottom. But um, with the constraint that we need to operate on 
in, in a world that has existing hardware and uh, has to deal with packets that uh, come from existing hardware, that tends to push us to the complexity of one of, one of the ones at the left. And there is a fourth option, which I sort of hit, which I sort of mentioned briefly, which is that we designed an op we designed a, for greenfield sites. We designed an optimum protocol, an MPLS two, um, in order to um, not have any of the backward constraints. I don't live in that world, but yeah, uh, you know, go for it. Um, well, I would just say, Karita, you lived you you lived in a world where IP was the only protocol in the very when when you worked on the very early days of MPLS. True, but um, that was then. This is now. I I think what I'm saying is not whether I, you know um, so, the way so that MPLS was done was it fit nicely with IP and. Um, so you didn't have to throw away IP. In fact, um, when when it started, you were actually going to put IP inside the MPLS, and then we did the pseudo wire stuff, and then we said, "Oh, we might carry native yeah, Ethernet." Okay. Um, unfortunately, we are over time, and uh, um, um, I'm happy to give. Uh, I, I need to jump to another uh, meeting. Loa, are you able to continue over? Uh, it's an important discussion. Um, but uh, unfortunately, we we'll... actually I'm done. I think I have got to go too. So, oh, okay. Uh, um, we, we, it's it's getting too late here. I'm kind of losing my focus a bit. Okay. Um, I'll stop.